Welcome to The Author Show, where we present new authors and books, from fiction to self-help and everything in between, you'll find it all here. To watch the TV version of our program, visit AuthorsWebTV.com. That's AuthorsWebTV.com. And now, let the show begin. Hi, I'm Linda Thompson, your host for The Author Show. Imagine for a moment that you are a visual artist, and then you get diagnosed with breast cancer. What would you do? Guest author Tina Martell is a visual artist, and in 2011, she did receive that news. She did something that not many people would even think of, much less have the nerve to do. She documented everything. In her book, Not in the Pink, paintings and photos illustrate what she is writing. Tina is here to share her story, so without further delay, Tina, welcome to The Author's Show. Hi, Linda, and thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute honor to be here. Tina, please give our listeners a quick overview of Not in the Pink. Well, the book is a full-color, illustrated book that, like you said, combines paintings, drawings, photographs, uh, medical records, any kind of collage elements I could find, along with video stills, and uh, with text that I wrote based on emails that I was writing while I was going through treatment. I was corresponding with friends and family. And I expanded on those emails. And later I combined them all together to um, create the book, Not in the Pink. I don't really know what to call it for format. It's not really a graphic novel, but it combines elements of that. It's an artist's sketchbook and it's a true story. So it combines all of those. What prompted you to share your journey in a book that includes graphics? Well, I think it did start... For me, there is this kind of myth that breast cancer is easy, that you disappear for a few months and you reappear and everything is great. Not so much. I really wanted to dispel that idea. And working through it with visuals seemed the right way to do that. It also seemed to me that while I was going through it, there seemed to be two kinds of books out there. One that was inspirational. This was an incredible journey and I learned so much about myself. I have even heard it referred to as a gift. No, a gift has a receipt and you can take it back. I didn't choose to go on any kind of a spiritual journey. I got sick. And the other kind of book was more how-to. And I don't really know how to have cancer. I've really only done it the one time. So I think I wrote the book that I wanted to read. It was. It felt to me that it needed to be honest and real And this was a road I was dragged down, and I tried to tell it like it happened. It's pretty obvious to me that you have a phenomenal sense of humor. Did that help you get through all of this? Oh, yes, it did. (laughs) I think there really are only two ways to deal with life. You can laugh or cry, and I tend to prefer to laugh. My family has a history of rather inappropriate humor at times. And I actually talk about that in my book because I do talk about my family a fair amount. But we try to find the humor in everything. And I did very much. It's a dark humor, definitely, but uh, humor nonetheless. You're a visual artist who decided to write a book. Did combining the two help you cope with the treatment and recovery? Well, I think that's a, that's a combination or um, answer again. I do think as an artist... I live through my artwork. It's how I process the world and what happens to me on a daily basis. So this was me filtering what happened into a form that would help me understand it better and that I thought other people might relate to. And I kind of think, though, if I'd really wanted therapy, and I think anyone could say this who has written a book, I wouldn't have written a book. I would be laying on a beach in Mexico with my friends drinking tequila instead. (laughs) Well, did you write your book with a specific type of reader in mind? Well, I did and I didn't. It it occurred to me that what would happen is that I wrote it for people who might be going through this themselves. And I wanted them to come away with the idea that they can actually be honest about what's happening. They don't really need to put a brave face on it. And then the flip side of that equation is that I wanted families and friends to actually recognize what that person might be going through and never telling you. There are some pretty ugly things that happen to you while you have your whole system blown out with surgery, drugs, radiation, 
And maybe if people were more aware of that, there might be a greater sensitivity to patients. So ultimately, I think I wrote it for anyone who's been touched by cancer in any way, shape, or form. And there are so many people who have been. It sounds to me like your book could be considered some type of therapy for a lot of people because you approach it differently than anything I have ever seen. So is there another author you feel may have influenced your writing style? I don't think there was a writer particularly that influenced my writing style. I think that I was influenced quite heavily by some of the graphic novels that are out there. So I was looking at the way things were put together. I think maybe for me, the writing style really was more conversational for me. It was very narrative. It was, I wanted it to sound like I was sitting telling you a story. And I don't know that there was any one author. I've read a lot. So I know the kind of books that I like are very much like that. They tell a story. Is Not in the Pink your only book? And do you plan to continue writing? Well, I certainly don't want to do a sequel to this one. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> and we are going to hope that doesn't happen. But I have been working on an illustrated children's book that has been simmering really for quite some time, probably even before this one. Of course, uh, the last time I attempted a children's book, it became quite sinister very fast. <laughs> and it really ended up being more of a critique on living in an oil-rich province, which is where I live right now. But I think on this next one, I can stay a little bit more focused and keep in mind the goal, which is children. How did you choose the title, Not in the Pink? Well, there is a dual reference here. One is the old phrase, which some of your listeners might be too young to remember, but being in the pink or not in the pink is a reference to being healthy or not being healthy. So that was one. But the other reference is the pink culture that has grown up around breast cancer. I think it came from a good place, bringing awareness to breast cancer, raising money for research, but it's been co-opted by so many people that for me, it was almost, it's almost meaningless now. And here I was in a system that as a grown woman, I'm surrounded by pink ribbons and teddy bears and things that have nothing to do with what I went through. It made me feel really like a child, not very empowered. And unfortunately, I also felt that I was guilty for not buying into that whole culture. I also spoke to a number of women while I was going through treatments who really felt the same way I did. But we feel a little guilty about speaking up. We don't want to be the one who is going, wait a minute, I don't like this. And after a while, I just started to get a bit resentful after it, about it. So that nod in the pink is a bit of a tongue-in-cheek reference to the pink culture as well. What is the take-home message for readers of Not in the Pink? Well, I'm hoping that they are more sympathetic, as I said, to patients uh, going through this and um, that they'll really stop to understand what their families might be going through and what they might be able to do, maybe even to stop them from handing out platitudes about what this should be about and how you should feel, because you do get a lot of that where people love to tell you how you should be feeling after treatment or how you should be responding to treatment. And I found that really frustrating too. So even if I can just raise awareness that it's difficult and it's life altering and we need as much support as we possibly can get. And the other thing I think we need is for people to keep treating us like people. We don't go into this uh, with the idea that we're going to come out the other end being some hero or being incredibly enlightened. And yet that seems to be the expectation from people that you are going to come out of this with, I don't know, you're walking towards the light. And that expectation needs to stop. It's bad enough that you get really sick. Now you need to become a hero besides. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> I've got to read this book. <laughs> so what, <laughs> what is going on with you now? Are you healthy and cancer-free? I am. I am. I'm lucky enough that I am back in my teaching position and I'm back in my studio and I am feeling well. I still have a lot of the side effects that women do have that aren't uncommon after treatments, but there's no sign of any cancer. Unfortunately, I'm not at the five-year mark, so my checkups are still every six months. 
and I am considered a quite high risk and my oncologist doesn't really seem inclined to release me from his care just yet. Uh, of course, he hasn't read the book yet, so he may <laughs> change his mind. But right now, that's, that's where I'm at. What type of reaction have you had from readers of Not in the Pink so far? Well, it's been very interesting because, like you said, I do have a sense of humor, and it comes across very strongly in the book. And one of the comments that I hear from readers most often, of course, is that they find themselves laughing out loud, and then they feel very guilty because they were laughing, because this should not be a funny matter. Cancer isn't funny. But the other thing that I have also been told is that they read it with a Kleenex in the end. So it's this combination of laugh and cry. And the other common emotion seems to be anger at what patients actually have to go through once they understand that that's what ha- what's happening. So I think you can't beat the combination, laughter, tears, anger, all the things that I really felt and I wanted to share. They seem to be coming across. Where can we learn more about you, your art, and most especially, where can we purchase Not in the Pink? Well, the book is available only in print right now, although I am working on an ebook version. You can find it on my website. The website is notinthepink.ca. It is also available on Amazon.com, Amazon.ca. And if you are Canadian, it is available at McNally Robinson in their bookstores and on the shelves. If you want to know more about my artwork, then it's tinamartel.com. Tina, in the minute or so we have left, please share with our listeners one thing we have not covered that would encourage them to read Not in the Pink. One of the messages that I really wanted to get across was the whole idea of um, surviving because you were positive. I honestly thought that I survived because I was too stubborn to die. And I think that's one of the most biggest myths about having cancer is that you have a positive attitude and you're going to survive it. And a friend of mine who I quote all the time says, the cemeteries are full of dead, positive people. You need to stay real. You need to be angry. You need to be happy. You need to be sad. Sometimes you're confused and you don't stop being a human being. And this whole notion of being positive, I think, makes everybody else feel better, but it doesn't do much for you. Tina, it's been a pure pleasure talking with you today. Thank you so much for sharing your story, and I wish you well with your art and your health. When you release your children's book, will you come back and talk with us again? Linda, I would come back anytime and talk to you. I can't thank you enough for having me and allowing me to speak about my book to your listeners. Thank you. As Tina says, breast cancer is a profound and life-changing experience. And yet, throughout her memoir, Tina has found moments to laugh at herself and her circumstances and share those with her readers. As we can tell from this interview, she has a marvelous sense of humor, and I have a feeling it is relayed in the pages of her book. Not in the Pink sounds like a must-read for everyone. This is Linda Thompson concluding another edition of The Author Show. Please share this interview with your friends and family so that they too may have the opportunity to discover our guest and her work. And why not help spread the word on social media as well? Please join us again next time for another exciting author and another great book on The Author Show. Thanks for listening to The Author Show. To contact us, call toll-free 1-877-955-8800. That's 877-955-8800. Or visit theauthorshow.com. That's theauthorshow.com. Tune in next time to another great author on The Author Show.